I want you to panic. I want you to feel the fear that I feel every day. And then I want you to act. I want you to act how you would in a crisis. I want you to act as if your house was on fire because it is. These are words spoken by Greta Thunberg, the most famous climate activist in the world in his speech to the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Climate scientists around the world agree that the earth is warming and that humans are contributing to this process primarily through the burning of fossil fuels, which release carbon dioxide or CO2 into the atmosphere. So things are clearly bad, but just how bad will they get? Well, the Vulnerable 20, an alliance of 20 countries at high risk to the effects of climate change, estimate that by 2100, more than 3.4 million people will be dying each year due to the impacts of climate change. We've all heard the predictions. Droughts, sea level rises, scorching summers. So, of course, we should absolutely continue with our current efforts to wean ourselves off fossil fuels and invest in new green sources of energy. And yes, we've made changes. Last year, we invested almost $500 billion into green energy. This is more than we have ever done before. But still, most environmentalists believe that we have little chance at keeping global warming under two degrees, the limit set by the Paris Climate Agreement. And even if we stopped at two degrees, according to the World Economic Forum, we will have already killed 99% of our coral reefs and caused untold other damage. We will have failed. So yes, this plan A is simply not going to be enough to avoid a climate catastrophe. Now, perhaps you've heard the saying, we must save Earth because there is no planet B. Well, I'm here tonight to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that luckily for us, there may not be a planet B, but there just might be a plan B for Earth. Because if we human beings are anything, we are resilient and we are adaptive. We are problem solvers and we are innovators. We've created an incredible world of skyscrapers, airplanes, wireless internet, and heart transplants, all through our application of science. And science can win the day again and help solve the climate crisis. If we let it. Tonight, I want to share with you a solution that we've had all along that could radically improve our efforts to reduce the rising temperatures on Earth. It's a concept called solar radiation management, or SRM for short which offers an encouraging reprieve from our impending climate catastrophe. So, well, what is SRM and how does it work? At the heart of the rise in global temperatures is a positive feedback loop. Essentially, when we warm the planet, glaciers and snow-covered areas melt, revealing darker surfaces such as soil or the ocean underneath. These darker areas absorb more of the sun's light, leading to further warming on Earth. This is where SRM comes in. Essentially, the idea is to develop ways to reduce the amount of solar heat reaching the Earth's surface. Say, for example, our release of billions of tons of CO2 warms the planet by two degrees. We simply use SRM to cool the planet by the same amount, canceling out the effects of global warming. In a way, you could say that instead of going after the root cause of climate change, which is CO2 causing solar heat to become trapped on Earth, we instead, redu we instead reduce the symptoms caused by greenhouse gas, which is the rising temperatures. Effectively, you could say that SRM is almost like giving the planet some Tylenol to ease our global fever. So, cool idea, right? Pun intended. <laughs> But, well, how do we actually do it? Well, scientists have come up with quite a few different ideas. But I'd like to share with you two tonight that are particularly promising and cost-effective. 
The first of these ideas draws inspiration from another one of Earth's previous climate crises. Let me take you back to the year without a summer. And yes, that is a painting of the summer of 1816. All across the US and Europe, temperatures quickly dropped, destroying the harvest and causing famine and riots all over Europe. Many believe that it was God's wrath sent to punish humanity for its sins. But was this cold spell God's wrath from heaven? Or was there some other earthly explanation? The cause, it turns out, is distinctly terrestrial. In 1815, Mount Tambora, a massive volcano in modern-day Indonesia, erupted, instantly killing 10,000 people. The mountain exploded with the force of 40,000 Hiroshima bombs, spewing thousands of tons of sulfur and ash high into the atmosphere. These particulates blocked out enough light to have a cooling effect on the planet. A few climate scientists, such as Wake Smith, a research fellow at Harvard University, are now hoping to replicate the effect of this volcanic explosion. Of course, without killing 10,000 people. Instead, scientists have suggested using high-flying aircraft or specially designed balloons to spray thousands of tons of sulfur into the atmosphere in a process they call stratospheric aerosol injection. Initial estimates show that it's actually surprisingly affordable, ranging from just seven to $72 billion, according to Smith. This is just a small drop in the bucket compared to the estimated $178 trillion that climate change will cost the world by 2070, according to Deloitte, a worldwide accounting firm. Another form of solar radiation management might just have come from a solution as simple as looking up at the clouds. In 2005, scientists at NASA studying satellite images noticed that the cloud ships passed under became significantly brighter and denser. If you look at the image behind me, you can see the paths where ships have passed under the cloud, making them more pronounced. Particulates in the exhaust and water spray from the ships that once aerosolized in the atmosphere caused the clouds to become thicker and brighter. Brighter clouds reflect more light, cooling the Earth's surface. This idea is called marine cloud brightening, in which massive amounts of seawater would be purposely sprayed into the air, creating the nuclei of new clouds that would thicken and reflect light away from Earth. Estimates show that specially designed drone ships could definitely accomplish the task. These ships would be, in essence, enormous mist generators, sailing around the world, spraying seawater and creating clouds and shade wherever they go. The good news is that the cost estimates for marine cloud writing are even lower than that of stratospheric aerosol injection. John Latham of the National Center for Atmospheric Research believes that a fleet of 1,500 of these ships, each costing around $2 million for a total cost of around $3 million, would be able to reflect enough light to stop global warming. These ships would have the added benefit that they could be deployed strategically. We could pick and choose what areas of Earth we want to, to shade. This means that by deploying these ships in the Gulf of Mexico, we could cool the ocean temperature there and reduce the severity of hurricanes. By deploying these ships around Australia, we could cool water temperatures and save the Great Barrier Reef from coral bleaching. All for less money than one new aircraft carrier cost the US military or less than one-tenth of a percent of what the U.S. Co collects in tax revenue in a year. So, this solar radiation management seems pretty great, right? I mean, these are technology technologies that could stop climate change and cool the Earth, saving lives and trillions of dollars. So the question is, why haven't we developed SRM already? It's because of the incredible amount of resistance that any experimental research into SRM has faced. So far, SRM has been almost entirely theoretical because every effort to back it up with experimental evidence has been dismissed, shot down, and outright banned in some cases. 
Not even the great Bill Gates can lend credibility to this concept. When he tried to fund an SRM project at Harvard University, he eventually withdrew his funding after a wave of popular backlash criticized him for his involvement. You may be surprised to learn who else is opposed to research into SRM. In 2010, the UN passed a resolution that effectively banned almost all research into SRM. And when several countries proposed lifting this ban, the US used its veto power to stop this effort. So, well, what is motivating all of this resistance into SRM? Very simply put, fear. Firstly, many people fear that if research into solar radiation management does indeed provide some way to mitigate many of the effects of climate change, countries will become reliant on it and will no longer feel a pressing need to make the drastic CO2 emissions cuts needed to reduce the greenhouse gas effect that is currently the cause of global warming. This progress is still simply not going to be enough to effectively combat climate change, even if we stick to our stated goals. Secondly, many people fear anything that involves meddling in the order of the natural world for human benefit. This is known as the Dr. Frankenstein effect. They worry that messing with the atmosphere could have unintended catastrophic consequences. It's the exact same reason people fear genetically modified foods. But all of these fears are unfounded. Firstly, while it is true that using solar radiation management might incentivize people to continue to use fossil fuels, it does so while simultaneously reducing the global warming that we fear so much. You can see in this chart from the University of Pennsylvania that a whopping 81% of our global energy needs are still being met by the burning of fossil fuels. We simply are not changing fast enough. Therefore, SRM is something we should embrace and not fear. And for those who are afraid of the consequences of messing with mother nature, they should consider that for SRM to be implemented on a worldwide scale, it would have to be heavily researched. And it is this research that would discover any potential accidents and find ways to avoid them. Besides, the most promising ideas that I shared with you today are easily and naturally reversible. We can just stop. If we find adverse effects to stratospheric aerosol injections or marine cloud brightening, we can just stop the SRM activity and things will naturally and quickly return to their normal state. Stop reflecting sunlight, mitigating any negative effects, including an accidental ice age. So again, there is nothing to fear from SRM. But there is something that we should fear, and that is our current situation. A situation in which we have our backs against the wall. If the climate predictions are correct, we're going to see hundreds of thousands of people, or even millions, hurt and killed in the, in the coming years by the irreversible damage caused by climate change. SRM can... SRM can literally pull us back over the brink and cause glaciers and ice sheets to begin growing again. About the current climate crisis, expert Dr. Hansen said, quote, we have used up all of the slack in the schedule for the actions needed to defuse the global warming time bomb. Well, if he's right, SRM would give us a little more slack a little more time, a little more breathing room to make the necessary changes to the needed to get, our, to get us off our fossil fuel addiction. Look, if we don't start SRM research now, later on, we're going to find ourselves in a place where we're forced by deteriorating conditions to rely on rogue experiments and guesswork, as one expert put it. 
Who knows? Maybe we will manage to get climate under control by changing our habits, burning less fossil fuels, and switching to clean renewables like wind and solar. But all of the current evidence indicates that this is unlikely. Research into solar radiation management isn't a choice. It is about our survival. If our house is on fire, isn't it time we start developing the firefighting equipment we will need to save the house and ourselves? Thank you. <laughs>